Hi everyone, this is Breck. I'm going to give a tutorial on using the stump tree language. All right, first let's go to Google Chrome. Let's go to treenotation.org and let's click on build the tree language. So if you're watching this, I hope that your version of the tree language designer looks a little bit different. Hopefully it'll look better. This is what we have right now and we're continuing to work on it. All right, so the stump language, I'm gonna click on the stump language here. This is the grammar for this language on the left, and you can see it's a tree language that compiles to HTML. So here's an example of a program written in the stump tree language on the right. And we can see that we, right here we wrote, it's a prefix tree language. This means that the first word in the line, the prefix is kind of like a keyword. So this is a very common type of not only tree language, but language you see in programming. HTML is basically a, a, tree, a prefix language. So now um, let's just click a couple buttons and see what happens now. So if I click on compile, you can see that the output of this program is written down here. And you can kind of see how it corresponds to the generated HTML. So I can also click on this button right here, the radio button. So that, now what that'll do is every time I hit a key, it'll update down here. So if I say, hello world, we well, can see that right here. This is a demo. We can see that update right here. Now if I click on execute, we'll see there's nothing out here. That's just because this language doesn't really have that, there's no need to execute an HTML uh, document. I mean, maybe there could be, but at the moment we don't have anything defined. If I click on explain, what this is going to do is, um, this is gonna show me the cell types. I'll get back to that in a minute. So let me, let me hold off on that for now. Let me go over here to the actual um, grammar for this language. So if you look, this one looks like it's a really long language. I mean, there's, whew, geez, almost 800 lines. But that's just because most of these lines just define very simple things in HTML, like, um, like you know, placeholder, like all the properties that you can have and all the tags that you can have. So that's the only reason it's long. And we, in the past, we actually had a shorter way to define a language like this, where basically we put all these things on one line, and, and we could potentially go back to that. So we'll see. All right, so now um, let's just go over here and let's just type some more things just to have a get, a get a sense for how this language works. If I hit Control Spacebar, I can pop open the autocomplete at any time. Um, so I can do a body tag. Of course, if I also... Um, start typing the autocomplete should appear. So um, everyone knows the h1 tag if you know HTML, hello world, and we can see that because I have this radio box checked, it's compiling as I type. Um, if say I wanted to make that um, red, I could do style tag color red. I can put traditional CSS in here, and in the future you might put Hakan, a language that compiles the CSS. So you get to stay in tree languages, but for now, um, we can we can um, just put inline CSS. I'm just realizing that this is actually not what I wanted here. You can see that there's a style tag. Um, HTML, there's like it's almost perfect, but there's a couple little kind of what I would consider mistakes. The style word is overloaded, so there's both both an attribute called style and a style tag. So um, what I did in this language, um, stump, I just made the style tag, I, I renamed it to style tag, and that's gonna compile to style. And then if you want the style attribute, you just do the word style. So, so that's um, what's going on there. So now we've got a simple bit of um, stump code here, and then we've got the compiled HTML down here. So now, what's this down here? This is a README, and it looks, the formatting's not great. We're gonna improve that, but um, this is auto-generated from this grammar file. So if we say, this cool prefix language at Composite HTML, you can see that this um, is um, 
Anyway, this is auto-generated from that from this file. All right, so now let's go ahead and pretend that we are making a new line. Oh, oh, let me explain some of these things here. So on the left, we have the stump node. Um, in the future, we might change how that's named, but for now, stump node. Um, this root means that this is like the root language. So this is so you won't like see the word stump in here. It's, this is um, basically it has an anonymous root. Um, and so we have a simple description. And then we have, let's start with this one, in scope the abstract HTML tag node. So that means that um, basically every line in a tree language has cells in lines or, or node types. So this, this program right here has, um, let me just get rid of this, keep it simpler. Um, it has two node types and two lines. So this is the first node and this is the second node. This space right here means that this node is a child of this parent node. So we've got a body um, node type, and then we have a H1 node type. Actually, what I can do is I can click explain, and this is gonna explain it even better. So here we go. Um, so every word here, and a word is just basically a, a word. Anything separated by a space is, is a word. Um, so um, this, this first word, actually, this will be a little bit extra information, but this tells you what node type this line is. So this line is a body node type. And then um, there's one cell on this line, the word body, and that's what this is, the HTML tag name cell. So that's, um, we'll get to cell types in a second. The second line is an H1 node type, and it has three cells, and this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one. So the first one, again, it's HTML, HTML tag name cell. And then the second and third one are both called any H, HTML content cell. So you can kind of like stick anything in this. Like you don't need to escape it. If you want to have some quotes, you can put quotes in there um, and it'll appear as you'd expect. So, um, so let's go back to cell types here. So um, that's the root node type and so basically in a grammar language at the moment there's two types of things we have we have at the at the root level we have cell types which are like words or placeholders for words and then we have node types which are lines and so um, when I click explain we get both what the node type is for each line and we also get what the cell type is for each cell so just think of these like as types if you're familiar with other programming languages um, and so in this code on the left, we define, we provide definitions for all of those things. So um, for example, like let's just go ahead and add a new node type and let's just call it um, demo node. And let's give it a description, a node for this demo video, whatever. Okay, so now if I were to go into here, um, Oh, I, I actually, nothing will pop up, but if I put this node in scope at the root level, you can see like I just did there. Um, there we go. Like we can, that now that's one of the options that we can have um, in our language on the right. So we just like change the language. Um, and of course, like we didn't, we said it didn't take any words. I can get that to a second, get to that in a second. So um, if it, you know, if I start adding content, we're going to see some errors pop up. We've got a couple errors now, so anyway, that's that. All right, so that's the demo node. Um, we'll just keep that in there. Why not? And then we have these cell types. Let's add um, like, I guess HTML doesn't have a concept of an int. Maybe it does. I'm not sure. Maybe we should add that. So let's add an int cell, and then um, in our demo node, let's let's do. Let's do a catch-all cell type. So this is a kind of a special type of cell that can take a whole list of items. So um, now if we go to demo node, oops. So one tricky thing about the, not tricky, but one little thing about this language, by default, if you don't define a specific pattern or match um, to match a node type, it's just going to use the, the letters of the node without the node suffix. So by adding this demo node, I added a uh, kind of like a added a demo keyword to the language. All right, so now I'm in the demo node and I can add some ints now. Um, and sure enough, we see those those kind of are working, but we have an error here. And, and demo does not fit into cell type int cell. The reason why that's that's happening is because 
the first cell is actually the, this word demo here. So I need to say, oh, this, this is actually taking one keyword cell. And now we see we've got the syntax highlighting for demo and we've got zero errors and we have the correct highlighting for our ints. Now, if I were to add like a letter A, we can see that's an error. Um, a does not fit in an int cell type. And where that's defined, we've got a couple of um, um, root kind of like worldwide types, we're calling them, we're trying to build that up, um, where we have just kind of the, um, just the, the types that are most common in the world. We're trying to build those into this grammar language here. So that's where that, but you can also define your own. So let's just say our incel is only going to allow ints that start with the letter two, or I'm sorry, it's only going to allow the number two. So now we have no errors, no errors. But if I put the number three, we have an invalid word. Cell three does not fit in cell type in cell. So you can kind of define your what the um, cell types are yourself. You can also have enum cells. Um, so let's just do, I mean, we'll keep calling it in cell, even though it's not really anymore. And, and we're going to say this is basic. Well, yeah, let's just, just say it's a, let's actually, let's just change it to color cell. Make this clear. We're going to have white and yellow and green and red. And now let's go back to our demo node and let's change this in cell catch all to a color cell. And now you should be able to see that you get the autocomplete and I can start only putting in these colors. And again, I have zero errors, but if I were to put something else in, we have an invalid word. Um, so now if I click on explain roots, you'll see that um, it's, it's very, it's exactly the same shape as uh, the explain word, but but it's a little bit different. And what's happening is it's showing you not only the cell types, but what um, cell type, what's the root cell type. And, and most of these languages, the root cell type is the any cell. Going back to that thing I was talking about, how we ship with a couple of built-in cell types. So um, for this color cell, let's just say I want to extend a different, let's just make it extend the int cell and make sure we have an int cell. An int is a int cell is a default type. So now if I click explain roots, um, oh of course now these are invalid words. So let's get rid of this, make that valid, and if I click explain roots, you should see that the root cell type, even though the cell type is a color cell, the root cell type is an int cell. Um, Man, this video is really going all over the place. So um, the other thing in here, we have an example node type where we have this example node. Um, you, you, you can see the compiles too. So this kind of gives us the file extension if we were to download what the compiled file was. And then we have JavaScript. Um, this could also be like Ruby or Python, etc. And that's basically a method that's going to um, for this, that's kind of like an advanced feature for your language. When you want to um, like have it execute or compile to something, you can kind of put code in line for your host language that will uh, create that output. So um, I'll show you a very complicated example of that. And that's like, this is super complicated. And, and I do hope to clean this up at some point. Um, but basically, this stump class doesn't just let you compile the HTML, it lets you like do all kinds of things. Basically, it powers like, web apps, and so it's more advanced than just um, compiling the HTML, but some of the, all that feature is currently kind of, in, all that code is currently still implemented in TypeScript, JavaScript um, for now. Anyway, so, but you can see how like tree just kind of works. You just have to indent the code. You don't need to escape anything. It's it's exactly, it's, I mean, it's, it's so nice. Um, I shouldn't say it's so nice. It's gonna be so nice once we have um, proper syntax highlighting in for a language like this, which we should have. It's just, we just haven't gotten around to doing that feature yet. Um, so volunteers would love, you know, there's a GitHub issue tracking that. That'd be great if we could get the correct JavaScript syntax highlighting, syntax highlighting in here. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is kind of like an unnecessarily long language, but um, it's, it, it is 
it's kind of simple once you get what all these these terms mean. Burn nodes. So this one's an interesting one where like say you had a paragraph and you want to be like hello world and you wanted to have some um, like new lines and stuff. Well, again, like say I wanted to have a new line that began with the word ID. If I were to do that because the word ID is an attribute in HTML, it's not really gonna work. So we have this thing called the burn node named after Tim Berners-Lee, not um, Bernie Sanders. Although, what a, what a guy he is too. Um, but anyway, all right, so now we're in the burn node. Hello world, ID foobar. And you can see that that is um, outputting what you'd expect. So we don't have to worry about those namespace conflicts. So that's that. It also kind of just demonstrates some of the nice ability of tree notation to just, you can really just put anything in here. And uh, it's just gonna work. I mean, I could even put real HTML in here if I wanted to. And, it's gonna work fine, just to, just as I'd expect. So that's kind of nice. All right. So then, what else do we have here? We have this button called infer prefix grammar. This will kind of like generate a new language based upon this sample program. And of course, it's gonna like lose a lot of functionality. But if you wanted to build a new language, I mean, it's it can be like a decent starting point to kind of give you the basics. So now now my new language. I mean, it only has hello, and I can only like do basic things. But anyway, that's what that infer button does. Download bundle will kind of like download, will package this up into basically like the beginnings of a Git repo for your new language. Generate random program. This is kind of like a work in progress, um, but basically it will use this grammar to generate a random program. It works good for this iris sample language, which um, if you're a data scientist, you're probably familiar with this data set. It's a famous data, data set. This is just a subset of it. Um, so we've got a tree language here and that defines that. This is ba basically, think of this as instead of CSV, it's space separated values, SSV. But you get really nice like auto completion and stuff here. Um, so if I, you know, if I made an error here, we got some suggestions on how to fix it. Um, and, and, and infer, oh sorry, generate random program works pretty good for this type of data. Um, so you can, if you click it once, it's just going to generate one row. But you can, if you call the method, you could generate as many rows as you need. So you can really, you can basically have a schema for how your data, um, the data is you're going to analyze, and then generate random data, which is really nice for like privacy if you need to put code online and stuff. Um, I realize we've just gone really off topic and not really on H stump anymore, but maybe this will just be a good overview video of the whole tree language designer tool um, as it currently stands. So parents object, sorry, programming option for overtired parents. Um, eventually this will, might actually be useful, but basically you can um, log the activities of your new newborn and it kind of demonstrates the use of uh, Unicode symbols instead of keywords. And you can see that how those are defined in the grammar. This is a short one, only 70 lines. We've got config, kind of your basic key value pair language. Grammar, so grammar itself is written in grammar. Um, so that language on the left here, this is always going to be in the grammar language. And so you can see it only weighs in at 294 lines of code. If you're a Lisp programmer, you're probably not surprised. Um, and so like when you're, when you're creating grammars, you get syntax highlighting and, and autocomplete and all that because it's grammar itself is written in grammar. And I can create a new grammar over here or just use this one on the left. Um, so where's this Doug, Doug one? This one just compiles to JSON. Um, you can see that on the right. Dumb down is kind of neat. Um, basically, it could be an alternative to Markdown. Um, more work to do on this one. Um, Hakan, clearly relevant for web developers as well as Stump. Um, and basically, it compiles to CSS. Um, and let's, let's do one that executes. Let's do, how about, uh, numbers? Let's just do a simple program. One plus one, we can click execute and it's two. We can just make it auto execute 25, two, five, four, et cetera. Um, this is just basically a demo language. Anyway, that's kind of, kind of veered off topic and, um, but hopefully it, showed you some of the features of the tree language designer as it currently stands. And I hope if you're watching this video, um, it looks much better.
now and it's much more user friendly, but this is this is what it is today. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.